Hello and welcome back to Catholic Chicago. I'm here with Archbishop Blaise Supich and we're joined in studio now by Monsignor Michael Bolin. Monsignor, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. We're uh, in quite a significant moment in not just uh, our archdiocesan history, but in our state history. The state is at an impasse in terms of passing a, a working budget. And that has an effect on the Archdiocese of Chicago. How? Well, you know, it's a great impact on the way we provide our services. The state of Illinois owes Catholic Charities this morning about $25 million for services already rendered, rendered and rendered to the weakest in our society, you know, the elderly, children, mm -hmm. you know, so many people who really rely on Catholic Charities for help. So one of the great challenges is not just how it affects Catholic Charities, though, it's really the social service network in the state of Illinois. That system is fragile on a good day just because of how poorly uh, social services have been funded over the years in the state of Illinois. And once you start taking these, it's like a building blocks, and once you start taking the blocks away, all of a sudden the whole thing crumbles. So they don't realize sometimes our elected officials that this is a very fragile system mm -hmm. and people depend very much on it. And what will happen if that system begins to further unravel or fall apart? That's what makes me, keeps me up at night, just because that's what the challenges are. As I see these agencies, this morning I had two an emails from two different agencies that are closing. So, you know, from across the state. So every day you're getting these notifications and it means less services, more obstacles to the poor. And um, it's just not right, and we should not allow that to happen. So this is not just a political issue. This is dealing with people's lives. Right. It's, it's not a partisan issue. Uh, it is political mm -hmm. in the good, sense good, that good. it has to do with the people, as the word polis means. Uh, it has to do with how we put together a, a social network that's going to make sure that the weakest don't fall through the cracks mm -hmm. in life. Huh? And Monsignor's point is well taken. It's not just the fact that the funding threatens that the services will discontinue, but it's going to eviscerate a whole system uh, that we have built up in Catholic Charities over many years because once you begin to lay people off, you're going to, uh, you can't realize it, think that they're going to be able to come back once you're going to hire again. Mm -hmm. you, you have a whole a network that's going to fall apart and you're going to have to rebuild. And that's much more expensive and also much more damaging to mm -hmm. the poor. Right. I, my biggest, you know, fear is that, they, you know, this is, you're talking about bringing meals to elderly people, you know, in their homes and they're doing, you know, helping them doing the daily activities, the adult daycares, the, the child daycares, you know, that allow, those things allow parents to work if their children are in early childhood. And we have seven and some of the most impoverished communities in, these, in the city. Once they go, that means the parents can't work. If the parents can't work, then they spiral further into poverty. You know, if it's an adult daycare, and not only are all the great things that happen in an adult daycare or in a child care facility for the children or for the adults, but it allows that family unit to be strengthened in a time when it is challenging. So to withdraw these things just means that people, that people don't realize these things are, are a network. So it, there's one, two or three services wrapped around a person allows that person for a senior to stay at home where they want to be. But they are, and meant sometimes in frail, or they don't have any other resources. So to wrap those services around them are critical, to allow them to stay at home where they want to be. And once you start unraveling that, my worry is what happens if they don't get food, or what happens if, you know, uh, they don't have other services that are provided for them. You know, this is it's life or death. I mean, a couple weekends ago it was eight degrees outside. You know, all weekend. You know, so cold out. These services are life or death. This is not just, you know, to me a budget is a budget and it's numbers, but behind those budgets are Faces. people and people that we face, you know, a million people in the city rely on Catholic Charities for help. And that's why we are speaking out about it. Monsignor, I think this is a terribly important point to make. It's beyond the numbers, as you just said, are, are the lives of, of human people. How many people do, does uh, Catholic Charities here in the Archdiocese serve? Maybe just give, give us some, well, some sense. It's 1.3 million people a year, um, 1 million people in the city alone. 
Every 30 seconds someone comes and calls Catholic Charities for help, whether they come into the office or call or, you know, are served in some ways with us going out, you know. We have 166 different locations in the Archdiocese, but all of them are places where staff also go out to see people. So oftentimes it isn't just an office building. Our office is the home mm -hmm. of the person we're visiting or providing those services for. So, you know, this is an incredible network of, of ways that Catholic Charity serves you know, in the name of the gospel, yes. you know, those who are struggling. And in fact, uh, the Catholic uh, Charities are, is really doing the work of the government. The government does not have, the state does not have the infrastructure to reach into the lives of people because uh, w the people that we serve are not necessarily Catholic. Mm -hmm. We're, we're ser serving the citizens of this state. Uh, it is an obligation of the state to, uh, to step forward and be supportive. The Catholic Charities, in fact, is doing that work all they're, they're asking for is to make sure that the contracts that were arranged in order for these services to take uh, to happen uh, would be honored by reimbursements. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I was listening to you uh, on the radio just uh, before we began taping here. You made a point. This isn't just affecting the Archdiocese of Chicago and Catholic Charities. It's affecting others as well. Yes. I mean, many agencies across the state are, are being closed um, or reducing their services. There's just a lot of people who do rely on, on Catholic Charities in so many different ways. And we rely on other agencies. So, you know, social work is this network. And so for us, we're always calling places or they are calling us to help out or to advocate for a client or try to help somebody. And as the Archbishop said, you know, the state does come to Catholic Charities because of its expertise and because of its mission and because it is connected. Mm -hmm. And those are the things the state, which is, is not, does not have any of those things. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important that our elected officials take the responsibility that they have been given to actually come together and to support a balanced budget so that these programs like at Catholic Charities, but it's also affecting education, mm -hmm. it's also affecting the health sector. Each of these sectors are all just unraveling because of without a lack of a budget. So it's really frightening when you see how it affects so many people in our state. Mm -hmm. Monsignor, what, what, what can the average Catholic do? What, what can the parishioners in our own parishes do in, in the face of this? Well, I would strongly encourage, you know, one, if they'd like to volunteer at Catholic Charities, they're most welcome to volunteer to support Catholic Charities in any way that they can. Uh, the main thing I think today is we would say, would you contact your legislators, especially the leadership, contact them and let them know that you are asking them to be able to produce a balanced budget and to come together. And I think the, the elected officials have to hear that voice from the people that, 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 that now it's necessary for them to step up and to be able to get a balanced budget. I mean, going eight months, now getting ready to go into the ninth month of a year without a budget is just outrageous. Mm -hmm. Archbishop? Well, uh, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the people who work for uh, Catholic Charities. There are over 3,000 who get up every day to uh, provide services to people. Many times uh, we don't know the wonderful sacrifices that they're making, uh, the contribution that they're making to the state, and uh, it's under a great uh, leadership of Monsignor Bolin and his staff. So I think we should be very proud. Uh, Catholic Charities helps the Catholic Church put its best foot forward mm -hmm. each and every day. Amen. Amen. To find out who your elected officials are, call the State Board of Election at 217-782-4141 and press number zero when prompted. You can also visit www.elections.il.gov and click on New District Official Search. Thank you, Monsignor Bolin. Thank you, Archbishop. It's a pleasure to have both of you here. Great to talk about these uh, important elements. And uh, you're always welcome here. Thank you very Thanks. much. Right. Thanks. 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 Good to be with you. Good Great. to be with you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You much. Thank you. Thank right. you very much, Tom. Thank you to our viewers for watching. I'm Todd Williamson. We'll be back next time for more Catholic Chicago. Thank you very much. We invite you to watch segments of Catholic Chicago and hundreds of additional Catholic videos at youtube.com forward slash Catholic Chicago. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter.